Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for Moritz, Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to another uh, application from Jam OK. It's called Polybud. It's uh, a multi track, polyrhythmic, a UV free MIDI sequencer. So quite nice. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So let's start to add in a MIDI um, channel and also an audio channel. The reason we are adding a MIDI channel is because Polybud doesn't generate sounds, it's a MIDI processor, so you need to have a host that support a UV3 in this case. So I'm, I'm using at the moment AUM, but you can use Cubases or your favorite uh, host as long as, as it supports a UV3. So let's uh, load something simple like a piano here in the other channel. And then on the MIDI processor, let's search for uh, actually Polybud. I have a keyboard connected as a Bluetooth, so you don't see the uh, iPad keyboard. There it is, Polybud. And let's connect the two as well, so that we have Polybud sending MIDI messages to the Grand Piano AUV3 2. So let's open uh, Polybud. As you can see, familiar interface, uh, um, if you use the, of course, uh, previous um, buds application from gem um, so the user control should be quite familiar so the way it works is you have a number of steps here in this case four you can add some you can remove some you can establish the total number of step in this case for example i want to have eight and it will add the additional four like like so then on the left here you have note so we are altering note at the moment and it will show you the note name underneath and the notes uh, that are available depends on the scale, which you can set for the settings here. So you go on the settings here. This is where you can set your MIDI channel, your minimal and max octave. If you want to remove a track, you can do it from here. You can set your pattern CC number, which is useful to change different patterns. I will explain that in a second. And this is where you set your scale. So for example, here you can say, let's go to minor, and then you of course press OK. But below you have uh, settings for your key and also your, no your knob control style, vertical, if you want to, horizontal, rotary, as uh, it is in other application from GEM. You also have a link to a tutorial and also the version number of the application. So this, the notes available here will depend on the scale that you have selected. You can also select velocity here, so velocity which are dependent uh, for each uh, of the steps, okay? I will show that in a moment, the gate, the ratchet and the number of notes repeated, the probability of notes being played, and also randomization of notes. And when you have done something like, let's try something like, I uh, don't know, like that. Let's click play. So we have created a little pattern here. You can see that uh, the uh, step uh, played is highlighted in red at the top. So you can go to velocity and say, well, okay, set the velocity. You can see at the moment that there are four steps, but on the note view, you have eight. So if you have only four steps, after number four, we repeat. So this four step will be applied for the entire eight steps as defined in the notes view. But of course you can add steps here as well and go uh, to the same number of steps. But that is entirely to you, which is entirely up to you, which is really nice to have different uh, um, number of steps per different parameter you want to change. So you can say, action take the first note and also number five, uh, so after every four steps. So let's try. And I'll make it a little bit more obvious, just reducing the velocity on other steps. So you should hear that. You can also decide to change the gate. So you can say the first note is quite um, open and the second and the fourth are quite closed, like so. So let's try. So you can simulate, for example, staccato if you have a small gate and you see the percentages, of course, in value at the bottom here. Then ratchet, you can say, okay, the first note repeated by uh, for two and also note number um phrase or step number three and of course because there are only four steps here it will repeat that because uh, uh, twice for the eight steps which are defined on the notes view of 
of course, you can set the probability. So you can say at the moment, it, every step is 100% of probability of being played. But you can say, well, okay, the first step, maybe we put it around 48%. So let's see what happens. Sometimes you will skip playing step number one. And as I have only four steps on probability, so that means that step number one for notes might not play as well as step number five because it's repeated. But of course, you can change the number of steps on probability. And then you can do the same really here on random. You can randomize also note. So let's put this back to maximum. And let's say randomize um, um, around 60% the first note and also uh, the third note around 78%. So let's try. And you can hear that the pattern is not anymore the same because you have a randomization included. So hopefully that explains how it works. Now let's set it back to normal. You might be thinking, well, okay, this sounds great, but it's similar probably to other applications we have seen previously from Gem. But the reality is here that this is multi-track. So you can click on the plus sign here and it will ask you if you want to add a, tr a track for notes or CC. And indeed you can add tracks that drive CC messages, which is really, really nice because you can create uh, some interesting combination. But let's say I add um, notes again, you'll have track number two here. And here you can define again, different notes for with different number of steps and then corresponding velocity gate, ratio probability, random parameters. The other great things is that you can set a different rate here for the pattern, which is different to, based on which track you selected, which is different from other application from Gem, where the rate was standard for the entire application. So just to give you an example, this is set on one eighth, but I could go now to track number two and change that to one fourth and leave this to node C2 and let's play. So you can hear that track number two is playing a lower speed half of the speed of track number one because the rate is set to one fourth instead of being one eighth as per track number one. At the bottom here you have patterns and so you can define this pattern and then you can click on the plus sign and you can find a different define a different pattern. And of course if you click and hold on one pattern it will give you the option to copy and delete. So you can say copy, you can go to the second one, click and hold, it will give you now the option to paste. In the case we, in this case, we have copied the uh, pattern one into pattern two, and then we can make some alteration, right? Like so. And then you can change manually from one to the other, or you can send the CC messages number 10 to change from one pattern to the other. So let's try. Now let me show you how CC messages works because uh, um, it's quite nice. So let's close this and let's double click here to add another MIDI processor. And let's choose again, um, Polybud. Here we go. Now we link these two. So we want that the input source for the first MIDI processor Polybud will be the second MIDI processor Polybud. So one, two. So these polybud instance will send the MIDI messages into this first MIDI processor or polybud instance, which then will send the MIDI messages to the grand piano. So what I can do now here, I can say, right, okay, so let's uh, put these down as a rate to um, very slow, half, okay. Then we are going to add, for example, um, a new track with uh, CC messages. Okay, and we say, what CC messages? Well, number 10, because it's the default one. And I know that the other instance is by default comes with CC messages. Sorry, CC messages number 10 to change pattern. And then what do we do here? We just uh, uh, select that track and we just change the value. So we just say on the first track, you go to uh, number one and then perhaps on uh, step number uh, three. So I should have said on the first step, we go to um, CC message 10 value one and on step number three value two. 
Now, if everything is okay, let's go back to the first instant. You should be seeing the changes in pattern. And you can hear it is very, very quick. And the reason is because uh, it is set on one eighth here. Okay. And um, I set to half the first track, but not the second one. So that was my mistake. So I can slow this down to one half and that's because it's polyrhythmic so it allows you to actually have a different rate for uh, um, different tracks so let's try again So you, as you can hear, quite nice. So you can create variation, okay, using CC messages. And remember, if you go down to settings, uh, here is where you see all the tracks, track one and two. So you can say remove track one because I don't really need that, okay, and that will be removed when you click, uh, um, okay. And remember, you also have a ramp uh, value. Here, which is accessible when you have CC messages. Indeed, if you go back here on the notes, you see the ROMP value is actually not there. Now, let me show you an ex another example of how this become useful. So let's um, uh, clear this and um, let's add again a MIDI processor and an audio channel. This time in the audio channel, we are going to uh, choose I'm ahead. We're going just to the crazy touch the volume because I know it's always high by default. Here we're going to choose uh, polybad again, like so. We're going to connect the two now. Perfect. So let's go inside here. Let's set the rate to 1 4. Okay, perfect. Now let's uh, also go to settings and um, uh, notes will be associated to. The drum sound in uh, in our um, Hammerhead uh, drum application. So in order to play correctly notes, because at the moment I have a major scale selected, I need to really go to chromatic. So let's scroll down and then choose a chromatic um, scale. Eventually comes up. There you go, and we press done. Now let's click play. Perfect. Now let's go. Uh, to uh, an even lower, let's say half, and then on the second note, let's move this up to other, maybe, maybe, uh, let's try D for now, and let's see what sound we have. Okay, and look now how great it is. Add another multi track for notes. Let's go on note. Let's set these to perhaps um, one fourth. Okay. And now let's say we go to uh, F sharp or G flat two, like so. And let's click play. Really nice, isn't it? And of course, you can uh, decide to uh, increase the speed. Remember always to go back here to make sure that they are in sync, particularly if you added multi-tracks at different stage. So you might find the between tracks, they're not in sync. So if that happened, just go back to the beginning and start playing again. And of course, you could um, now add another MIDI processor here, which is driving, for example, another track. So let's try that. So let's say that we are going to use ISIM here and we are going to open that up and we are going to go to base and let's choose, uh, I don't know, let's try, um, let's try a base. Um, we can change it later anyway, see what uh, this sound like and then we can change it. Let's uh, open up a new instance of uh, uh, Polybud. As you can see, a lot of buds application, they're like a little gems, as some of the subscriber mentioned. So let's connect. There you go. And let's open this up and let's start the play.
really nice, right? And now we could, for example, go to settings. We could say, go to a minor scale. And then we could say, randomize the second note and the fourth note all the time, 100%. really nice and you could create another pattern so another variation and then you could use for example a MIDI processor as a master controller which sends different MIDI CC messages to change um, different patterns so remember as I've done the beginning so just add another polybad um, instance and then on there just add for example a CC message like so then, as I demonstrated at the beginning, select it, and then, of course, you can uh, define how uh, things really work, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, so how this is how it works. So I'm sure you can have a um, lot of fun using uh, this new application. It's really, really nice. Okay, I hope you enjoyed, and see you at the next video. Bye.